Some people say what you see is what you get. Is that the case? Is that the truth? Sometimes we say that about a person, right? That, you know, what you see of them is what you get. Is that also the truth? So they say whatever you hear, don't, you know, give a discount. As a friend of mine would often say, he discounts what people say. Some people, maybe only 5%. Others, maybe 90%. <laughs> and that's what they say. You discount. Do you discount what you see? Or because you saw it? That's the reality. So I would suggest, because of the Tanya that we learn, is that there's something deeper that we have to be able to see or that we don't see it with our physical eye but see with our mind's eye and to train ourselves to be able to see what our mind's eye sees as a greater reality than what our physical eye sees so for example if you see somebody you know a congregant in the synagogue or a family member, and they do something that maybe is not becoming. So the physical eye saw one thing, but the mind's eye could perceive something else. Physical eye saw something negative. The mind's eye hmm, may not be the case. Like learning in Chumash, as we did just now, in the story of Rachel and Leah, Rachel and Leah, with Yaakov, their husband, and the relationship could be on the physical level, on a, the, you know, the on the simple what we see from the verse. Oh, I've hired you tonight for me. <laughs> To be with me, Leah says to Yaakov. But in fact, what it is, as Rashi points out, is that she had such a strong desire to be a mother of the tribes of Israel that she did anything and everything to be that mother. And therefore, to 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 have children that's a deeper way to look at things I invite you we're a few moments late today because I teach Chumash with Rashi every day and it's uh, fascinating to learn the five books of Moses to learn it with Rashi's commentary I invite you every day to come and join us it's usually around 20 to 9 Eastern Standard Time. And uh, very fascinating journey. Welcome to Tanya today. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you from Chabad Zichr and Kadesh, Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. So, give me one second. I want to get a prop over here. Wow. So the Alter Rebbe begins today's Tanya with discussion about an esrog. This was my esrog. It's been reduced in size because it's now two months later. <laughs> the Alter Rebbe gives, let us understand how an esrog derives from the 288 sparks that have not yet been purified. Hmm. When God created the world, 
he created fruits and vegetables. Why is this fruit any different? What the eye sees is just a physical fruit. But the, what the mind's eye can see is something much more profound. So since this physical fruit derives from the life force of Klipas Noiga, right? Because after all, before it was used for a mitzvah, it was just a regular fruit. So now, be, since it does derive from Klipas Noiga, which is then it has the spark, one uh, has uh, the 288 sparks of tohu they, from the primordial breaking of the divine of the vessels, and it's not yet been elevated to divinity. Or same thing would be with parchment that you make, or, or a parchment scroll that you make fill in, right? Before it was also something that was animated by Klipas Neiga. I mean, this isn't inherently holy. It was inherently Klipas Neiga giving it vitality. Same thing in parchment that comes from animal skin that is used to write tefillin. It's also inherently being animated by Klipas Neiga, the admixture of good and evil. And all of a sudden, what happened? It becomes holy. How? In other words, it's being animated differently. It's not being animated anymore by Klippus Neiga. I mean, this is no longer... I mean, this is still holy, and that's why I have it. There's a holiness to it. And that's why I have it. Now, obviously, anybody can abuse holiness, and anybody can do, you know, with uh, Tefillin, God forbid, wrong, bad things with it, with the, with an asterisk, you know, hold, hold on to it. Some people use it as um, as a jam afterwards. So you're using it then, you know, consuming it, making a blessing on it. So it has that kind of value. But how did it change from just a regular fruit, what the eye sees, and now the mind's eye understands it, that it is holy, and it elicits the vessels of Zuna Vatsilos, which is Zaw and Malchus, right, the union, because that's what a mitzvah is. A mitzvah creates a union, speaking about the matriarchs and the union that they wanted to create in order to have children, right? That begets children, so it begets a new light in heaven. But when you do a, when you do a mitzvah, right? So how do we understand that all of us, that now it becomes this holy object? Since we're Chabad, we need an understanding, not just mere faith. I, I mean, I have faith that this is holy, and it's not just a regular lemon from the lemon family. It's an asterisk that was used for a mitzvah. Many people used it for a mitzvah. So, the Alta Rebbe gives us a metaphor. And it's a metaphor that we had previously in the 20th, um, in the 20th letter of the Geras HaKadosh. And that metaphor is of a seed. You take a seed and you put it into the ground. It decomposes... It rots, it becomes like nothing. But what does it do in that process? It elicits the power of Mother Earth. Then now it will grow into something fruit berry. In other words, in other words, this seed that is, when you think about it, it's like, what is it? It's nothing. But it has the power to elicit something greater than itself. Mother Earth, that the, you know, all the, the, the nutrients and the, the, the power of growth that's there, and the only reason it's there is because God said, let the earth sprout forth. God said, let the earth sprout forth. But there's nothing inherent in earth, except that God made it inherent in it because of the words that he said and says continuously, let the earth sprout forth. He then said, let the seed sprout forth. The seed is only eliciting the power that's greater than itself. Ah, that's a beautiful metaphor. In other words, we elicit through the usage of this for a mitzvah, and when we do it for a mitzvah, we elicit, like the seed elicits, 
a power that's greater than it. Then a power that comes from above, which that power, if you recall, the name Sag, 63 numeric value of when you spell out God's name. There's four different ways to spell out God's name in full, the tetragrammaton. And one is at a 63. We're not going to go into that again. But that represents a light in Tohu a, in the world of confusion, <laughs> right? In a world of uh, where the lights are great and the vessels are scant, are minimal. And it's a powerful light that that light then creates a union light and vessel the light of the divine attributes with malchus the male and female above and that they creates now a new light because now i've used this esrog for the sake of connecting to god for the mitzvah through the mitzvah wow is that beautiful Similarly, when we study and carefully examine the laws regarding the mitzvah, so we arouse the Chachma Bina Vadas, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of the ten divine attributes in the vessels of Zun. And we also bring that divine light from, right, from Sag, which Sag, the name of God, Tetragrammaton, as it's spelled out, right, that name is the inner dimension of what we call Adam Kadmin, primordial man. And there elicits that new light that makes now, draws it down, and that makes this, which was previously only animated by Klipas Noiga, right, which is not holy, which everything in this world is animated by Klipas Noiga, right? But it makes it now a holy object because it's now being animated by such a lofty level, right? Again, the metaphor of the seed that elicits something so much greater than what it is in and of itself. Powerful stuff. So what you see is what uh, what, what you get. <laughs> right? You see a depleted, it used to be robust, right? Lemon fruit. Uh uh, this is an asterisk. This is an asterisk that many people handled and made a bracha and did a mitzvah connected to God. It's holy. So it's holy that I can't just dump it. I've got a lot of them from over the years. They end up becoming hard and brown. That's the story. So, learn to live with your mind's eye of what it knows from Tanya and not what your physical eye sees. You'll have a much more beautiful life to live. Questions, comments, any thoughts? Vida, why, why Mashiach has to come when the world is in a state of chaos. I'm not clear what you mean by that. Is that why Mashiach has to come because the world is in a state of chaos? Ah. Well, I, I mean, for sure. Yeah, no argument there. No argument there. All right, let me, uh, in the meantime, well, if anyone wants to think of more questions, let me just say hi to Marcy and to Celeste and, and Deborah and to uh, Simcha and Julia, Davida and Liba, Rebecca, um, Brett and Vincent from Alberta. Susanna, Joyce, uh, who else?
also the Ron, uh, Jeremy, and Deborah, Moshe. Alex. There's somebody. I think I missed some people, maybe. Sarah. Uh, Brett, is it true that the holiness of an object requires an observer to recognize it? Um, I mean, it's not the recognizer that uh, that makes it holy. It's the usage of it for the sake of a mitzvah that makes it holy. Um, Now, does that mean someone could, God forbid, you know, act in an unholy way with tefillin, with the esrog or whatever? Of course it can happen. Of course it could happen. But it doesn't make it unholy. It just means it was dealt with in an unholy way. In other words, it's being animated from the lofty level that we just explained, not from Klippas Daiga, and therefore that's what makes it holy. So it's objectively holy. It's not subjectively holy. I guess that's what it means. And and therefore we it's incumbent upon us to act with it in a holy way. That that's our choice, of course. You know, God doesn't take away our choice. Um, Simcha, how are we going to meet Mashiach? Well, he's coming. But he's got to come today. Right now. <laughs> In the middle of our Tanya class. What a great way to greet him. Imagine Mashiach comes and we're learning Tanya. Or, you know, you're praying to God. You're doing a mitzvah. You're doing something God wants you to do. What a great way to greet him. That's what I hope and suggest. Okay. Amy's Esrug from 13 years ago is hard as a rock. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Rambam's coming up. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine from Team for Kambad Zuch and Kedeshim. My Shah Kano, it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you Tanya. Also, for those who signed up for the JOI course tonight, exciting times. Come and join. Thank you. God bless.